they don't use any chemical. I mean, in, in, in third world countries, they can't afford chemical fertilizers the way we do. Now, the challenge when you use chemical fertilizer is if you don't mulch on top of it, you're adding those salts and alkalinity back to the soil because chemical fertilizers tend to have a high salt level to them in a residue. So if you're going to use chemical fertilizer, and my recommendation is try to find an organic one, it's a little slower, but it's more gentle on the soil. And what's the difference between, you, you ask or, organic, what's organic? Well, organic means coming from probably recycled waste in this, in, in, in recycled green waste. The difference between chemical fertilizer and organic fertilizer is organic fertilizer feeds the soil. Chemical fertilizer feeds only the plant. So it's uh, a friend of, of, of Michael's and mine, uh, named Michael Christensen, says he, he's a British or a South African guy, but he says, I call it the cocaine syndrome. You take <laughs> some and you keep having to take more. Because what happens is you're literally putting the plant on drugs because the soil around it is the same as it's always been, but you're pumping up that plant with steroids so the plant is unnaturally healthy. So if you're going to use chemicals, and I'm not necessarily against them, for example, with potted plants, a potted plant is not a natural item by, by its very nature. By the way, separate issue, potted plants, if you ever have a potted plant, remember that every time you water that plant, you're draining fertilizer out the bottom of it. Whereas if you water something that's in the ground, it's going to retain that fertilizer. So potted plants need more fertilizing and, and more careful fertilizing. Okay, back to plants here. This is a kind of an interesting one. This is called Ceratozamia hildae. Um, it has, it makes a little bow tie shape when the plant gets more uh, mature. It's, uh, oh, one of the neat things, cycads, uh, there are a number of them that are shade loving and drought tolerant. It's very rare. Think about it. If you have a shade garden, most times it's bog plants. It's callas, it's philodendrons. Okay, this is a shade plant that's drought resistant. 